you would call the roll, please. Commissioner Foster. Here. Commissioner Javi Wright. Right. Chairman Hughes. Hello. Oh, is that Commissioner Javi Wright? Here. Thank you. Chairman Hughes. Here. Commissioner Laring. Here. Commissioner Mahoney. Here. Commissioner Nash. Here. Commissioner Snyder. Here. Commissioner Wilkins. Here. Commissioner Skolnick. Here. So everyone's here, is that correct? Yes. That's correct. Okay. Next item of business is approval of the minutes of November 17th, 2020. So moved. Support. Support. Okay, we have a motion. It's been supported. Are there any uh, comments, corrections, anything that needs to be um, attention needs to be brought to it in the in the minutes? If not, we'll do a roll call on that one too. Kathy, please. Commissioner Javi Wright. Here. Yes. Com Chairman Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Laring. Commissioner Laring? Yes. Commissioner Mahoney? Yes. yes. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Foster? Yes. Commissioner Skolnick? Yes. Okay. Um, the uh, minutes are approved. Now we have time for public comment on an agenda item. Um, if anyone would like to make a comment on an agenda item, now is your opportunity. Um, if you go to the bottom, you should be able to find a button that says uh, raise hand. I don't see anybody. I don't either, Bob. Okay, we'll move on then. Um, the next item is a communication, the budget report that Beth includes in uh, every agenda. Beth, do you wanna say anything or that was just for our information, correct? Actually, Mr. Chair, this there is no communication on this particular um, agenda. We usually do that the second ways and means of a, of a month, not the first. So okay. that must have just um, been a, an oversight that that was left on there. Okay, um, then we'll move on to items for consideration. The first one being WM20-12-115 to approve payment of the accounts payable of $13,184,918.62, covering the period of November 6, 2020 through November 19, 2020 for checks and electronic fund transfers and P-card payments covering the period October 1st, 2020 through October 31st, 2020 as presented by the county clerk. So moved. Report. Report. Okay, um, the major payments, uh, as always, were um, the finance uh, director included the big ones. Um, are there any questions or comments on that? Uh, if not, um, we'll vote. Roll call, please. Chairman Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Laring? No. Commissioner Mahoney? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Foster? Yes. Commissioner Hovey Wright? Yes. Commissioner Skolnick? Yes. Okay. Um, the next item is WM20 slash 12 116 to authorize the sale of the 2005 Ford Taurus, VIN number 1FAFP 53205A245713 through Metama Auctioneering Incorporated. So moved. So moved. So moved. All, right. All right, we have uh, a motion that's been supported. Press and hold both volume chains for three seconds to get back. Commissioner Laren, did you want to say something? No. No. Okay. Are there any any questions? Uh, I'm sure this is a, a mint condition for Taurus. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, we'll have a roll call, Kathy. Please. 
Commissioner Laring? Yes. Commissioner Mahoney? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Foster? Yes. Commissioner Hovey Wright? Yes. Chairman Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Skolnick? Yes. All right, that motion passes. The next item is WM 20 slash 12 117 to authorize staff to seek procurement level quotes to replace the boilers at building A. So moved. Oh, so far. So okay, we have a motion. It's been supported. Matt, do you want to just kind of just like you did at the pre-meeting, tell everybody what's going on here? Yes, uh, that building has two boilers. Uh, they're both original to the building, and one has been out for quite some time, a couple of years. And, what and building, I know what building it is, but you want to describe the, which building it is? It's a single-story building where Human Resources is currently located on South Campus. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Have a question. Um, the, uh, are when are we replacing it with something that is um, uh, renewable energy, uh, cost effective, et cetera? Uh, yeah, Matt Fair Public Works. Yes, we will. We will specify and spec out a high efficiency, a high efficiency boiler for that um, building. And, and Matt, what will the power be? What will run it? Natural gas. Natural gas, okay. Matt, there are two boilers in there. You're going to replace one right now. Is that correct? Well, we're going to we're going to look at now if you know if we get authorized to go out for bids or for procurement level quotes to do this, then we'll sit down with our engineer Steve Fink and other professionals in the business and take a look at it and see what's the best fit. Whether we go to yeah, a single one, single two, one, or two. Or we haven't started that process yet of okay. the quote unquote specking and design until we're authorized to even go out for this. Very good. Any other, any other questions? Yeah, I have a question for Matt, if I may. Okay. okay. Uh, Matt, I'm wondering if we can get a quote for a boiler renewable energy or renewable energy boiler that burns wood. If that's the commission's wishes, we will. <laughs> Um, this is Brenda Moore. May I may I say something? Uh, Brenda, this is a board meeting. I'm not sure that you know. I just know the city of Muskegon doesn't allow wood burners. That was being facetious. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, roll roll call, please, Kathy. Mr. Mahoney. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Foster? Yes. Commissioner Hovey Wright? Yes. Chairman Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Laring? Yes. Commissioner Skolnick? Yes. Okay. Um, the next item is WM 20 slash 12 119 to approve the request to establish a new job classification of appraisal technician slash MCAO at pay table grade GU-00185, $17.16 to $21.14 per hour, effective November 1st, 2020, and amend the budget accordingly. So, so moved. Or Second. Okay. I think we skipped 118. Did we? But we can go yeah, back to that. Yeah, we'll go back to that after this. I'm sorry. Um, are there any questions on that? Um, is is uh, Donna on here? I didn't. I don't see her. Are there Are there any? Um, I'm looking and I don't. I don't see her. Mark is is Donna Vander. Oh, there she yes. is. Yeah, she's with us. I'm sorry. You were below the line. No, you're not. You're right in the middle. Okay. Um, so, do you want to just talk about that for a minute and and why um, why the request? Oh, you're, you're muted. I am muted. Can you hear me? Yeah. Now we can. Yeah. Hear. 
Okay. I had someone who put forth the effort to get their next level of certification. It wasn't required in the job. It, they funded it themselves and they took this class, which is like um, six months of Saturdays. It took a lot of time and effort for this person to do it. One of the things I wanna point out, our pay scale is low as it is. I know we fixed some of it, but somebody with that certification i'm looking at something from the assessors association advertising what people could get if they got the certification 20 to 25 an hour just the mcat below that the lower certification is 15 to 20 an hour so i part of this a big part of this is retaining staff and it's supporting them when they make the effort to advance Okay, and you told me, but I don't remember that MCAO, what does that stand for? Michigan Certified Assess Assessing Officer. It's the old, there used to be level one, two, three, and four. Now it's MCAT, MCAO, MAAO, and M MAO. So it's now it's Certified Advanced Master. And then before that, it's just an MCAT, Certified Assessing Technician. So they changed, they've got these new letters for what used to be the one, two, three, and four. Okay. All right, any any questions? I have a question if I may. Okay, Zach. So are we, is this position, are we required to have this level of certification for this position? <laughs> the position currently does not require the position for the new position, yes. The person who did this was not required to do it. We want to encourage and retain staff. And our salary range is not market. Okay. Uh, roll call, Kathy. Somebody's in the wind. I think it sounds like. I don't know. We're getting a lot of noise on this. Oh, okay. Good. Sorry. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Foster. Yes. Commissioner Harvey Wright. Yes. Chairman Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Laring. No. Commissioner Mahoney. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Snyder. Yes. Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. All right, we'll return to um, one before WM 20 slash 12 dash 118 to authorize staff to partner with Consumers Energy to provide sex, solicit bids and oversee the conversion of the exterior lighting at South Campus, Hall of Justice, Heritage Landing and Health West Hellman facilities to um, LED. Authorize the board chair to sign any necessary agreement with Consumers Energy. So moved. Support. Okay. Are there any questions on this? My, Bob, I do have a comment on that. Yes, go ahead. I know that in one of my plazas, uh, somebody just came in and replaced all the lights for me without a cost. So if I will get that information from uh, Public Works, and if that helps, we might be able to save some money on that. I agree. Thank you. All right. Roll call, Kathy. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Snyder. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Okay. Yes. Commissioner Foster. Yes. Commissioner Harvey Wright. Commissioner Harvey Wright. Yes. Chairman Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Laring. Yes. Commissioner Mahoney. Yes. Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. Yeah. All right, the next uh, item is WM 20 slash 12. Um, to authorize human resources to accept the proposal for excess workman's compensation insurance of Midwest employers casualty for the period of 1 1 21 to 12 
Um, if not, um, roll call, please. Commissioner Mahoney. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Snyder. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Foster. Yes. Commissioner Hovey Wright. Yes. <clears throat> Chairman Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Laring. Yes. Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. Okay, the next item is WM 20 slash 12 121 to approve the resolution pledging the county's full faith and credit for the Black Creek Consolidated Drain District Bond Series 2021 general obligation limited tax for an amount not to exceed $6 million. So moved. So move. Second. Okay, we have the drain commissioner on here and we have Beth if there are questions about this. I have a question on that. Um, yes, Susie. You know, I was reading a thing the other day, and it said that the drain commissioner can spend up to $5,000 a mile of drains. And this seems like this is in excess of that. So I'd like Brenda to explain that to me. Not on none of them. I'll solve it then. So the $5,000 cap is for maintenance, annual maintenance. We can collect $2,500 a year in assessments and we can spend 5,000 a year in general maintenance, which requires no special approvals or hearings, we just go do it. And that's why actually we're getting so many petitions because you can't do much in a mile of drain for $5,000. So that's, it's kind of apples and oranges. This is a petition project, that's for general maintenance. Does that make sense? Um, will this money do the whole 44 miles? Yes, we're actually going to work on uh, the whole 44 miles. We're not digging everything. Sometimes it's just woody obstruction. Sometimes it's a need for a private culvert. What this does not include is any county road commission culvert. Um, the actual bids came in at $12 million, which is just too much. So, and we did 12 bid packets and we negotiated with each of the contractors um, to bring the cost down to do the most critical and we ended up getting um, at about 5.7 million. So um, that was quite an effort, but we will be doing this. And other than public culverts, um, we should be in good shape for decades on this 44 miles of-, of thank, uh, thank you very much, Brenda. Beth, I had a question for you too. Will this $6 million, if it's approved, have an effect on our credit rating? Um, we will have to, um, this is being proposed as a public offering, as opposed to a placement or a negotiated sale. Um, we, we will have to go for a new bond rating, an update. We haven't had one uh, for a year and a half. So I can't answer that question. Um, it'll depend on uh, what standard and pours, how they evaluate us um, during that rating call. If we don't do this, do we still have to have the new evaluation? Uh, we wouldn't have to have a credit rating unless we go out for a public offering. Um, so that there will be other uh, bonds coming up next year. I know that uh, the water system needs to include some addition or go out for additional bonds for the um, channel crossing project. And there may be some other projects uh, sometime next year as well, but. Is that gonna limit our ability to bond next year for other things? Uh, no, we have plenty of room within our uh, legal debt margin. We are um, have about, as of last fiscal year, uh, 2019, we haven't gotten an updated calculation yet, but we had over $366 million worth of room um, within our, our 
bonding authority as of fiscal year 19. And we've obviously issued some bonds this current year or through 2020, but um, we would still have a sizable amount of room left in our margin. Um, the drink commissioner, um, the drink commissioner could do this without the full faith and credit of the county, but it would be more expensive for the residents. Is that correct, Brenda? Um, that's my understanding. I don't know if, if um, Mr. Sauter's on the line. He's our um, our bond bond counsel. Um, when we went to for the Kuis and went to a private um, offering, it did cost more than it would have. Uh, because we didn't have full faith and credit, and I'm hoping to avoid that. This is a big enough project where I really don't want to add to any of the cost. If I may make a comment to the rating, the cost for the rating is included in our computation of costs, so the bond proceeds or the, the assessments will take care of that. That's not a cost to the county. And all of this area is headwaters for Mona Lake, so any work we do is going to benefit Mona Lake as well. Mr. Chairman, may I? Yes, Gary. I'd like to commend the Drain Commissioner's office for saving the residents a huge amount of money before this project started two or three years ago. And I also think we, the board, need to make sure we give the full faith and credit to save our residents as much money as we can on this project. Mr. Chair? I would totally yeah. agree. Yes, Marsha. Yeah, um, is this, have we done this before? Is this a common thing to, to offer the County's full faith and credit. We've done it. Uh, you know, Brenda, you know better than I do, but we've done it. Yeah, we've done it before. Yep, it was done for the Pearson drain. Um, okay. And ride. You know, and ride. Yeah, okay. It, I mean, it hasn't been common before my tenure, frankly, but I think the county may have offered full faith and credit to other departments or other projects because of the financial leveraging ability it has, but that's a good best question. But uh, Brenda, just, just to clarify, I thought it was, it, it doesn't make much difference, but it's 44 miles of drain. Yeah, the reason it's so large is when Mr. Fisher was in office, there were several smaller drains like what I almost always do maintenance on, but the notion was to manage the watershed because we had to flow through Marsh. So it was actually Moreland Township that filed the petition to consolidate dozens of drains to make them one drain, which is Black Creek. So this system could be managed like a watershed and concept very good, but in politics, when you're trying to do work on it, not so much, but I, that's what I have. And we're gonna tackle the whole thing at once and it should last for decades. Okay, any other? Mr. Chair, I have one question if I may. Yes. I Brenda, how many uh, dollars have you spent on this Black Creek drain since you've been in office and maintenance? If you have $5,000 per mile, how much of that have you used? Um, I'd have to look, but we did what was the McSorley branch and the uh, Dirks branch. And so we were sort of hopping around and, and picking and choosing based on the worst. So we only did a couple and then I got the petition. Um, I can tell you there was a lot of frustration that somebody in the North watershed was paying for the McSorley um, because they weren't really close to it. But that's the way with the consolidation, I was forced to handle it. If I did something on a branch, everybody had to help pay to some extent. So this one petition actually makes it, in my mind, more equitable because we're doing the whole system, we're busting it out with 12 contractors, everybody's got improvements, they're all helping to pay for it rather than bits and bits. I would say probably 100,000 was spent on those two, that's just kind of a guess, on the jerks of McSorley before I got the petition, I think it was 26. Brenda, is that $5,000 a mile and could be spent annually? Yeah, see, and what's weird about Black Creek, because it's 44 miles and it's one system, it's been consolidated, what's 44 times 5,000? And the original management of this system was to go, okay, let's go find the worst of the worst, and I can collect 5,000 per mile per year, but that just becomes unwielding. Yeah, that 44 times 5,000 is $220,000, and I know those, all of us have been involved in you know, projects with public works with many things, 220 doesn't get a whole lot of work done when you're looking at 44 miles of anything. 
Mr. Chair, if I could comment to that last yeah. comment, though, that's per year. So Correct. if we haven't spent this two hundred thousand right. dollars in one year, let alone over ten years, well, it's going to take the residents of the county ten years to pay off this six million dollar bond. So. No, it's going to be a thirty-year bond. Is what we're going for, Commissioner. Well, and it's going to take them thirty years to pay it off, and we haven't been spending the five thousand per mile for multiple years. I'm just suggesting that maybe yeah. maintenance would be an opportunity to, to all, I mean, I'm getting calls from residents that can't afford to, the assessments being placed on their properties and are going to be forced to sell their property over this. Okay. Um, roll call, Kathy. Commissioner Snyder. Yes. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Foster. Yes. Commissioner Javi Wright. Yes. Chairman Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Laring. No. Commissioner Mahoney. Uh, yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. Okay, the next item is WM 20 slash 12 122 to adopt the State Drain Commissioners Association resolution to rename the Office of the Drain Commissioner to Water Resources Commissioner to recognize the changing nature of the position under state law. So moved. So report. All right. Any um, any comments on that or discussion? Bob, I do have Bob, a comment have on a that. Comment. Okay, go ahead, uh, Susan. You know, I have a little concern right now because we just finished an election and we just elected a drain commissioner. And I would rather see this come up in four years when the people will elect a water resources commissioner rather than change the name of the people, what position the people just elected. I agree. So that's, that's, my, that's my only concern with that. Brenda, do you want to defend yes. your yeah, Well, I mean, I don't know when a good time is, um, Chair Hughes, because if we did it just as an... If, if we did it in four years before someone's getting elected, I think that causes more confusion because the person, I don't intend to run again, the person running where there's a traditional drain commissioner post is now calling themselves water resources commissioner. And I think that will be much more confusion than let's take the next four years to change, have both names, have it be tied to the website, eventually make it just water resources commissioner. We have four years to educate the public get things in order, get things in order for an election. So next time around, that person has the name and it's been the name for four years. Yeah, I think it makes sense to kind of ease people into it over time. I agree, but anybody else have comments? I agree. Commissioner Bob. Yes, go ahead. Uh, we're not changing the duties of the drain commissioner as elected. We're simply changing the name. The duties have changed already through state law. Um, so it makes sense to change it to the Water Commission rather than to hang on to an old style thing. Uh, like I said, the election was for the position, not the name. Anybody, John, did you, did I see you? John Snyder? No, I just wanted to indicate that I think it's something that ought to be done. I think it uh, lends some credibility to uh, the position, and I think it's important that there be credibility to the position in view of all of the prior uh, difficulties that have existed with respect to the drains in this county for a number of years before Brenda took the office. Anybody else? If not... Kathy, roll call, please. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Commissioner Snyder? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Foster? Yes. Commissioner Javi Wright? Yes. Chairman Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Laring? No. Commissioner Mahoney? Yes. Commissioner Skolnick? Yes. Okay, next item is WM20-12-123 to approve a salary range adjustment, adjustment 
Um, the Deputy Drain Commissioner's position X27001 from NX00280 with a range of 25.712 to 32.443 per hour to NX-00300 with a range of 28.188 to 35.635 per hour and amend the budget accordingly. So move. Okay. Uh, we have Brenda. Uh, Brenda, you can't come back here for a while. <laughs> no, I know. Um, I, you know, I've sat on all these things for so long, but when I lost and then won, it became real apparent that some things should just occur and we can phase for the next leader of this uh, department. And one of them was somebody made a comment uh, a while back, what if you lose and the new person brings in a different person? And, you know, that's that person's prerogative, but I want to set a standard and I've actually written out responsibilities um, for the deputy. And since I became drain commissioner because of changes in law and our, us picking up activities, she's that person, um, the position has a lot more on their shoulders in terms of helping shop for financing, bake notes. I've got a whole list. I'm sure you've read the memo, but just generating the assessments. And if, if that post didn't have a person on the ball, um, we'd really be messed up. The organization would suffer. And so I looked back and the, the deputy drain commissioner used to be one of the lowest paid in the county. And considering the activity that they had um, in years gone by, I can see why there wasn't a lot of demand, but now the demands on the deputy based on the pace we've set and the things we do is much higher than what it used to be. Any other, any comments on that? Um... That's a that's an important job. Uh, the drain commissioner is an important job, and if you come in there and everybody's new, I don't I don't know how that works. Um, this is better. I mean, it's I think you've yeah. position, but go ahead, Susie. I, yeah, I have a question. You uh, on this that when Brenda first got there, you had a secretary. You've eliminated that position mm -hmm. in your office, so she's actually taking on two positions right now. But what happens if? the new drain commissioner or you at another time decide to put the secretary back? I don't intend to. I think they'd have to ask permission. Uh, frankly, Stephanie and I both handle it. She doesn't take all the secretarial. I do my, my share. Um, I don't think the office warrants it. In the spring and in the fall and after rainfalls, it's crazy around here. But in terms of phone calls and visits, we don't get a lot of public traffic. So I think for the greater good of the organization, this office, um, deputy, and it talks about the deputy helping with clerical. Uh, those two people can handle it if they put their shoulder to the wheel. Just say no. Can you tell me if that position has been eliminated? I think it was. Or just not vac or is just vacant. I think I don't know. I think after it's been years. I mean, I, I offered that up when we had a budget crunch, knowing I was assessing the county. Um, and we haven't suffered much since unless we get a bad rain or it's spring or fall. As I, as I understand it now, both of you are just working half days. Part of, one of you works part of the day and the other works the other part of the day. Would you? Oh, we both work full time. Oh, you we both work full time. Work yeah, I just okay. tend to be in the office more and I see. have to work from home more just because we I don't see. want exposure to each other. Okay. Hey, Beth, do you know if that job was eliminated? I'm or... going to. I'm going to quickly look and see if I can tell if it's. Uh, uh, Kristen, on, on, Kristen is still here too. Maybe she knows. Oh. Yeah, that's true. If Kristen's logged on. She might be able to look it up quicker than me. I, I think it was eliminated, but. Mr. Chair? Yes. Yeah, I think um, uh, in the memo, uh, it she compares the um, her her uh, deputy drain commissioner uh, salary to to or hourly rate to the other to others in the county and i think she makes a good case she's not i mean it's not even i mean it's kind of on the low end even after the increase so i i think uh, it's justified mr chair i see yes. that the clerk two position is what on what we call our unfunded position list so it has not been eliminated but it is not there is no budget assigned to it okay is there a reason that job has to be um, the decision of the drain commissioner? I mean, why wouldn't that be a permanent position? 
Under the drain code, and, and most elected officials have the prerogative to bring in their own deputy. Most re uh, newly elected people have the good sense to, to keep the old deputy at least for a while for organizational continuity. And that's my hope is I'm setting the bar, describing what this person does, and that's what guides who comes in. Um, I actually had someone comment to me, he was gonna bring his girlfriend, and this was somebody from the last election, he was gonna bring his girlfriend in as his deputy and I just about choked. Okay. Well, I, Any, Bob, I, yes, yes, Bob, I, I, you know, I would like to um, offer an amendment to the motion that we would do this uh, with eliminating the position, the position that, that has been, been you know, right now, the other position, the secretary's position. Is there, is there support for that? To me, that that's premature. Uh, it seems to me that you ought to go ahead with this and let Brenda give us the outline of what the position actually requires, what its responsibilities are, so that we have a better handle on what the decision is going to be. Uh, let me ask this, Beth. What's the what's the, the dollar and cents impact on this this motion? It wasn't very much, was it? No, no. it shows it's about thirteen hundred dollars. However, I know Brenda has a, has made mention that um, within her budget there is uh, room for absorbing a portion of this. Plus, we can also bill um, a portion of this to the road commission. I believe, if that's correct, Brenda. Right. Um, the the county assessments were budgeted higher than they're going to be, and even that sub number, you can give a, a bill to the road commission for a good amount, and we always calculate that for you, so you can bill them in turn. And also, we do the site plan reviews for the, all those uh, stormwater MS4 uh, cities, and I'm going to up that rate and put some of it for admins because Stephanie helps with a lot of follow up and billing. Well, the deputy, I don't want to put a name to it. That person has, the position has to do a lot of that. So I think next year we can, you know, bring in some more money to help with that as well. But this year our budget can absorb it very easily. So what was it's, the number, Beth? It was, it was small. It's right on the... $3,100. Yeah. 3100 I'm not asking for retro. That's 3100 for half a year, correct? Well, yeah. for, it'd be it's from... Really December one. Whenever this is approved, forward. All right, um, Kathy, roll call, please. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Well, are we using? We didn't get a second for oh, the oh, motion perfect. that Commissioner Hughes made. Yeah, there was no second. That's a separate issue. Commissioner Wilkins. Yes. Commissioner Foster. Yes. Commissioner Javi Wright. Yes. Chairman Hughes. Yes. Commissioner Laring. No. Commissioner Mahoney. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Commissioner Snyder. Yes. Commissioner Skolnick. Yes. Okay. okay. The final item is WM 20 slash 12 124 to approve the payment of $35,736.27 to the state of Michigan for September State Psychiatric Hospital Services. So move. So move. That's hard. All right. Any discussion on this? Uh, who's the expert on this? Is it Beth, is it you or? Uh, that would be me. Um, I didn't. I didn't think to have Brandy join us today. Um, oh, she's on the call. It was on oh. it. Yay! Yeah, because I would like to know if they have the money to pay this. Brandy Carlson, Health West Chief Financial Officer. This um, is, as you know, the state inpatient. It's ten percent that is required by the county local match. So, unfortunately, going back to uh, Ms. Hughes to you, this cannot be Health West dollars. It's the county's dollars that it has to be to cover state psychiatric inpatient stays. Is this 10% of it? Yes, this, is, this will finish out the entire fiscal year okay. 20 and all previous year settlements that have came in. 
So, so this is more than one year's worth. Yes, because there was a lot of settlements that had happened. I believe I came right before COVID hit asking for an increase because I think it was around January, February, we had, the state had started cleaning up all prior years. And I know in September, we did have one last prior year that I verified um, to make sure that those were, should be the final numbers completely, and which was confirmed. Because it looks like it's $35,000 a month. And now and, and you're asking us to pay 700000 The grand no. total for the entire year plus all previous year settlements was 761000 35,000 of that is what was owed for during the month of September. And it put us over budget by about 30,000, $31,000. Okay. And how much of this is for previous years? The, the good majority of it, I would say probably 70% of it. Okay, and does the health, is there money, is there money for that? Health West doesn't have a portion to pay within this. It's okay. just the county local match. And then, and why, other, I, then I want to ask Beth, why isn't the county match been paid over the years? It, it is paid. Uh, we, we get a monthly uh, bill. Brandy provides us with the invoice uh, on a monthly basis as they come in. Sometimes they, they lag, but um, it's provided. We budget it in the general fund. It's provided and we do a, um, a payment based on those invoices, but there's okay. been some cleanup that has occurred this year from previous years and this last bill that came in for fiscal 2020 um, we tried to estimate where we were going to end up this year back in may when we got the big invoice and yep. we estimated a little too low okay thank you mm -hmm. you're welcome okay kathy roll call please commissioner mahoney yes commissioner nash yes Commissioner Snyder? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Foster? Yes. Commissioner Hovey Wright? Yes. Chairman Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Laring? Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Skolnick? Yes. Okay, thank you, Kathy. The next item is old business. Is there any old business for ways and means? I don't see anybody. Is there any new business? I have a question, please. Yes. This is Brenda. Um, just to address Ms. Hughes, uh, Chairman Hughes' concern about me deciding to have a secretary, I think I would have to ask the board. So you have some control over that. Is that accurate? That's my question. That'll, uh, Brenda, that'll come back up. We just didn't want to, we want to have, I think, it, it, my sense is, that we want to be able to think about it a little bit and see what, if there are any ramifications. I don't know what could come up, but I mean, just make sure we're not doing something we're going to be right. Okay, understood. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Mark, I, Mark, Mark, will you, Mark, will you put that on your list of things to bring back? Yes, I have it done. Okay. I'm sorry, Charles? No, I was just saying, I believe the grand commissioner is correct because it's an unfunded position that would have to come back before the board to be funded. Correct. I can assure you it's my intent not to do that in the next four years. Okay. Um, so new, no new business then. All right, public comment. There's time now for public comment on anything. Uh, I'm looking, raise your hand if you'd like to speak. And I do not see no one. I don't see anybody. Okay. I don't either. Um, just a minute. Let me. There. I'm sorry. Commissioner. Um, yes. Mark Administrator. Uh, Commissioner, have you right, Miss uh, Human Services? She had a, I believe, a resolution. Uh, would it be appropriate for her to bring it up at this time? Okay. Um, I, d I don't have a. Oh. I guess we have to answer the question first. When I was at uh, uh, Health West meeting, um, it it was uh, clear there has has been uh, really uh, 
working above and beyond and and struggling to just kind of stay <laughs> together and that that it was appropriate and needed to uh, give an extra uh, uh, thank you for their service and, and recognize them in a resolution. I have not prepared one, but um, I, I think we can probably find one uh, to, um, uh, to use or to, to revise uh, that we can pass at the next uh, meeting if, if uh, people are so inclined. But they're, they're struggling to keep their staff and to, and to um, you know, deal with the co with COVID and and uh, understaffing and all of that. So, all right. Final board comments. Anybody, Commissioner Bob? Uh, yes, Commissioner Mahoney. Uh, I appreciate uh, Commissioner Foster's concerns about vets. Uh, a friend of mine who was a World War II vet just passed away last week from COVID. He was 94 and in very good condition. Uh, in fact, I knew his father, which is kind of scary, but his father lived to be 104. So it was more than his health condition. It was COVID itself that took him out. Uh, it's unfortunate, very bright, young, older man. Uh, and it's real and it's here. So we need to be very cautious. Thanks. Thanks, Ken. Uh, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Support. So moved. Great so job, Bob. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs>